I'm Tom Prescott and I'm a recorder maker. I'm here in my workshop in Hanover, New Hampshire to talk to you about how to care for your recorder. I'm first going to talk to you about what you can do for your recorder without removing the block and then I'll show you how to remove the block to clean and oil the windway. The best way to care for your recorder is to keep it clean. The windway of the recorder is the area between where you blow and the ramp which is where the ex air exits. This is a very small space, so it's easy to have it clog up. There are five things you can do to make your windway happy. Please always brush your teeth. Wash your hands before handling the recorder. When you finish playing, wipe off the beak with a damp cloth to keep calcium from forming on the blowing end. I would love to have some of this blue cheese on a cracker right now, but it's going to grow mildew in my windway. These, this mold is going to propagate. So instead, I always make sure that I don't eat blue cheese the day that I'm playing or that I've brushed my teeth and waited a couple of hours. After you've played your recorder, don't seal it into something that can't breathe. A hot, warm windway is a great place for mildew to form. If you can, leave your recorder on a stand so that the windway can air dry. Use a slotted stick with a cotton handkerchief such as this one to wipe it out, wipe out the bore. Don't use a fuzzy swab such as what they give you with often with recorders uh, as it will leave fuzz in the bore. Despite taking great care, some people are mildew growers. If you're one of them, Treat your windway with vinegar to kill the mildew and change the pH so it's less likely to grow in the future. I'll show you how to do that later in the video. Besides keeping your recorder clean, it's important to keep it humidified so it will stay stable. You should store your instrument in an area where the humidity is at least 30% and no more than about 50%. Your instrument may need to live in a room that has a humidifier. You can do three things to help prevent the recorder from clogging. When your recorder is new, break it in for short periods during the first eight weeks. Start playing about a half an hour a day for the first two weeks. Then add 15 minutes a day for each week after that until you've hit two hours total. This break-in period allows the block to expand and contract with each session. Your instrument becomes more stable than if you play it for a long period and let it sit and then play it for a long period again. This also gets the wood used to being moist. Second, warm up your instrument before playing it, particularly if it's made of grenadilla or ebony, two of the harder woods. Hot air from your lungs hitting a cooler surface forms water droplets. These droplets can keep the air from freely flowing through the windway. Warming up your recorder will help prevent this. Finally, break up these droplets by treating the windway with a surfactant. A surfactant lowers the surface tension of a liquid, causing it to flatten rather than bead up. You can make a solution using dishwashing liquid. I prefer a clear lip product such as Joy or 7th Generation because they don't include softeners that might reduce their effectiveness. I use a ratio of one part dishwashing liquid to six part water. Then you invert the head, close the blowing end with your finger, and pour some of this into the windway. It doesn't matter how much you use. You can slosh it around a little bit and then let it run out. You can rinse the exterior of the beak without worrying about disrupting the film that you just put in. That way you won't be tasting any dishwashing liquid. Give it a good dry, let it sit aside for an hour or so, and then you're ready to play. If you're having problems with clogging, you may have mold or mildew growing in the windway. You can attempt to kill off and flush out the mildew using vinegar without removing the block. I prefer white vinegar because it doesn't have a lingering taste or smell. 
pour the vinegar into the windway the same way you did the detergent with the blowing end stopped and going in through the ramp area. Let it sit for about a minute and then let it run out. Wait five minutes and then go ahead and flush it. A little pressure is perfectly fine. You probably want a little pressure. The water can be lukewarm to moderately warm. I mean, if you can get your hand under it, then you're okay. Give it a nice good rinse. Recorders love water on the inside and out, especially if it's balanced like that. Then you can dry it, blow out the excess soap. You can also, once you've done that, it doesn't, it doesn't have to dry. I would get the, uh, I would go ahead and swab the bore. And then do your detergent solution infusion. Let it run out as you had before and let it dry. And then see if it plays better. If you still think there is mildew growing inside there, repeat this process. You can do it immediately or wait a day but that will at least keep it from propagating. The only effective way to oil a recorder is to remove the block so that you can oil the windway. The windway is the wettest part of the instrument and needs the most protection. If you can't remove your block, oiling the exterior and the bore is still useful. The oil is good for the wood and helps to seal the bore, making it more resonant. I recommend using almond oil. I add a little bit of vitamin E oil to it to keep it from getting rancid. Allow the oil enough time to soak in for at least an hour. Wipe it completely so that your recorder doesn't get sticky. Very often a recorder will have a buildup on the end of the beak. You want to treat it with vinegar to dissolve the calcium. I take a part of a tissue about this size, fold it over into quarters like this. Get it nice and wet with vinegar and then lay it across the end of the recorder. You can even wrap it around to the other side if you want to. Um, you can let that sit for 15 or 20 minutes if you want to. After you've done that, pull it off, give it a little bit of a rinse and wipe it and see if that has gotten most of it off. At this point, you have done all that you can for your recorder with the block in place. However, the majority of problems with recorders occur when there are problems within the windway. These can't be fixed without removing the block. Never drag something through the windway to clean it. Your recorder is made with precise windway dimensions. Even small changes can affect how your recorder plays. If you are able to remove your recorder's block, you can completely clean the windway. I'll show you how you can do that. I use these easy to obtain tools to remove blocks and to clean recorders. This is a 5 8 inch dowel and I've put a 1 inch dowel on the end to make it into a hammer. This is the same thing without the head put onto it. That will do altos and tenors. Then I have this for sopranos. Uh, it's a half inch dowel. If you're going to do sopraninos, then you need a 3 8 inch dowel, and I don't have one of those here. Um, these two dowels are pushers. They're used to replace the block and take it home, push it home, when you're done putting the block, taking the block out and removing it and reinstalling it. The blue line is so that I always hit the same place if I need to urge the block back in because I don't want that rough struck area to rest against the soft block and leave an impression. For cleaning I use these twisted wire test tube brushes. I like the tapered kind. They can do a graduated number of sizes. 
uh, and I use this for sopranos. I haven't been able to find a, a good tapered small brush. These have horsehair as the filaments. They're pretty soft, especially this one. You can get nylon brushes, but often they're stiff. This one really has a lot of resistance to it. And while it's unlikely to damage an instrument during the cleaning process, I would still like a nylon brush to be softer than this. Horsehair brushes are almost always soft. Then it's good to have a sock around and you'll see soon why I like to have that. To remove the block, you want to put a sock over the end of the beak so that the block won't go flying across the room. And then if you've got a heavy enough dowel, you can just tap it out like that and remove it from the sock. And there you are. Be careful because these edges are really delicate and they have a lot to do with the voicing. So um, you don't want to damage them. That was a tapered block, which is relatively easy to remove because it only gets traction at the last little bit of its motion. This recorder has a cylindrical block. And for it, you have to do repeated striking because it drags the whole way up. I'm also showing you this on my couch so that you can see that a couch is another way to catch the end. If you want a little more force, you can put your hand over the end, which is designed to keep you from hitting the end of the recorder, and then use a hammer. And the couch just saved the block from flying across the room. As you can see, the interior surfaces of this recorder are actually quite good. You can see that at some point there was mildew on this recorder but it must have been effectively controlled. That black is what's left over from the mildew. When you remove mildew, the color usually doesn't go away, but the mildew will be killed and will be gone. So the first thing I do is see what I'm dealing with. And uh, I'm looking down here with a light behind it and just looking for roughness, feeling for roughness. And then I'm checking the surface of this of the block. Then I'm ready to start cleaning it. The first thing I always do is to apply vinegar to the voicing surfaces. I do it to the top surface here and you can't use too much vinegar so don't worry about that. And to the face of the block because while I've never seen mildew on it, you may as well keep it from starting. Then for the windway, you're going to paint in like that. Again, all you want. And then looking down the recorder, I like to at least coat the first inch just look for dry spots. If you see dry spots, that means you haven't finished coating. Get up in there. You can go all the way down if you want to. It's not a bad idea to do the socket end because that can get kind of cruddy too. You also, very importantly, want to do the ramp because it can get mildew growing on it. Let that sit for oh, five, ten minutes, and then you can do the washing. If you had really heavy mildew, you would want to do a quick washing, come back again and use the vinegar again, and then do a second washing. So I'm going to use this twisted wire test tube brush that I was talking about before. I get it wet. I get the bore wet, and then I run a ribbon of this nice dishwashing liquid. You could use anything, but 
As you know, I'm a fan of Joy. And then you insert the brush and hold it pretty firmly. So you can see I'm getting quite a lathering going. And just the 20 seconds I've done there is usually enough to loosen anything that's in there. Remember, it got in there from your saliva and therefore it's water soluble for the most part. The only thing that's not water soluble is the mildew because it's tenacious. Once you've done the head, go over the block, do the face of the block, I can go straight to rinsing. I like to use the brush to urge out all of the detergent. So first I get the brush unsoapy. Once you've got all the detergent off, I'm going to take a tea towel to do the basic drying because it's so nice and absorbent. Then dry the exterior of the head. The socket is often really dirty on these because it's got cork grease or wax or whatever in it. So I take a tissue and clean that like this. Uh, on many recorders, this would be black where it had done the job. This recorder is pretty clean, so we don't have that issue. Then swab out the bore and windway. We've already dried the block, I think. And put it on its side. And ideally, you would let it sit overnight to dry. If you're in a hurry, you can use a hair blower. You can run it on high. I usually dry the block and the head at the same time. And as long as your hand can stand the temperature, then the recorder can stand the temperature. If you have one of the maple instruments that's got a paraffinated bore, paraffinated wood, pear wood often is done the same way. You have to be careful with your temperature because it will cause the paraffin to come out onto the surface. So now that the recorder's allow been allowed to dry, you're ready for oiling. I have my prepared almond oil here. And I like to use a doubled over piece of, uh, a doubled over pipe cleaner. Doesn't matter what order you do it in, I usually start with the windway. It's always good to have a light so I can look down the bore. Can you see that? I do the whole bore all the way down and keep going until I don't see any dry spots in there. And I go from the other end you can see there's a dry spot in there. That's telling me I still need to do a little bit of work. Yep. And you oil the ramp. And then on the block, you're just doing this front surface, which is all end grain. And you want to stop about a sixteenth of an inch below the top so that you don't get any onto the windway itself. And then I add a little bit of oil here to a tissue. So you're going until you have a nice coating on the outside. And set it aside and I'll show you how to remove the oil. So you take the block, wipe in this direction, Then I like to start with the exterior because otherwise I'll be spreading oil all over the room. Go ahead and wipe in the ramp area. As long as you're touching the ramp with a piece of tissue, you're not going to damage it. 
use your thumbnail or a fingernail to get into the beads. And I usually wipe the socket at this point too. Then I take the same tissue to be economical and start it into the bore like this. You might want a slightly smaller dowel for this purpose, but you're just pushing it through like that to get the first layer of oil off of there. And look for shine. If it's shiny, then there's still oil there and you want to keep wiping. Get your socket again. Notice the last time I didn't get it all. See if there's anything visible in there. There's still just a slight dull sheen on the lower surface there. And that's enough that I would want to give it yet another wipe because I don't want anything left on the surface. And check your the corners of the wind weight. You may have to use a little bit more force to get those corners. Then I take a dry brush. You can take your earlier brush and if it's dried overnight it'll be dry or another brush. And I do this to the wind weight to make sure that the corners are clean of oil. And I do this on the ramp. And then do one final inspection to make sure that there's nothing shining back at me. And once that's done, the cleaning process is over. You can put in your anti-condensing solution, go directly onto the roof. That's the only area that needs the solution. Then I leave that aside to dry, which is well, 10 minutes and then you can reassemble the recorder. Now we're ready to reinstall the block. On this recorder, it's a fairly easy process because it has a tapered block. And as I said before, it goes in pretty far without any effort at all. Make sure that the windway lines up properly with the um, recorder before you get ready to push it home. This is what the large dowel is useful for. I place it on the end and with even pressure, push it home. There, I actually got it that time. You wanna feel here at the base of the curve and see if it feels even. If it's not, then if it's too far in, you give it a little tap and start over. If it's too far, out, then you tap it in. If you, if you can't do it just with hand pressure, you can do it with the hammer. You have to hold it again so that it's evenly sitting on the block so it won't rock and damage things. Then you just give it a tap. That time it went in too far, so then you Gently tap it the other way, and if you're lucky, it'll come even without a whole lot of effort. This is a cylindrical block, and it's a little harder to work with. You really have to pay attention to making sure that the windway is lined up, because that's your chief way to index the block to the head. Then, keeping it snug in the windway area, you want to get it past this initial point here and then get it in as far as you can by hand. I did pretty well that time, but these always take a little bit more effort and require usually some hammer work. You might want to wear a glove. The one inch dowel is helpful because if you slip, you're less likely, in this case it's not quite exactly big enough, but you're less likely to hit the recorder and damage it. But barely when you're reinstalling the block, if it's really difficult, or when you're removing the block if it's difficult, you are probably doing it during the time of year when the block is most firmly in place. 
The ideal time to remove and reinstall a block is in the late spring or early summer when the humidity is going up in most areas. The larger diameter exterior expands at a greater rate than the small diameter of the block. That gives you a differential in size that makes it easy to get the block in and out. If you have string joints and they're a little loose, it's easy to fix. I like to turn the end at 90 degrees so that I can find it. And you just unwind about that much, wind it back on, and then it's nice and snug back to where it should be. Uh, if it's too tight, you can just unwind as I did and snip a little bit off. If the end doesn't stick down well, you can drag it through some beeswax. Uh, don't use cork grease on string joints. Then. If you've got cork joints and they're a little bit loose, the simplest solution is to take Teflon plumber's tape, wrap it around, do a neater job than I'm showing here, give it a good pull and snap it off, and then when you reassemble it, you'll be nice and snug again. If the joint is really in bad shape, you can remove the cork and wind screen string around it. Make sure you glue down the first layer with Elmer's glue or something like that. Wind it back on until it fits right and you're all, you'll be all set. If you want a more permanent repair, take the instrument to a band instrument repair shop and they will put no, new cork on it. Don't ever wind dental floss over the tenon. It's not very flexible and it can cause the tenon to shrink. If your joints are stuck together, the easiest way to handle it is to put it on your knee, give it a little downward pressure, turn it 180 degrees, do it again, and usually that's enough to break the seal. Uh, if that doesn't work, wear rubber gloves and have a friend help you twist it apart or put it in a damp space or inside a plastic bag with a damp rag. Oh. I'm often asked when a recorder should be sent to a professional for service. If you have cleaned and treated the windway, then does it still have problems with the high and low nuts? Does it clog? Those are good reasons to send it to a professional. It's normal to expect a recorder will need to be revoiced during its first year. The dimensions change over this time. I hope these suggestions have been helpful. Happy recorder playing on your well-maintained recorder.